Okay, hey guys, and um, let me try and get some of this background noise on. There we go. Hi, we're here again. So this is our piece from last week's stream, um, when I decided to do, where did I put my mouse? Um, when I decided to do a moon-styled inspiration. For those of you who are new, I'm gonna bring up the image. So, the image that just appeared on our screen, I had to make sure it was up. 
the image that just appeared on our screen is Moon's portrait that was done in Imagine FX issue 172, not 72, 172. And I am absolutely in love with it, so I decided to do my own artwork inspired by it. And so the artwork on your screen currently is this. So I'm just going to take you back and show you where we came from. Yeah, just going to show you where we came from. It's been a long journey, so if I turn all of this off, <laughs> I'm going to turn off so many things today. Um, and as you can see, there's a giant hole in her head. And if I turn off her tattoos, her hair, clothes, whoops. Alright, so I've actually erased out some of the original sketch, so you'll have to see with me if I turn that off. And I'll turn the background off as well. I'm gonna add a new layer, drop some white in there, and you can even see all the stitches and everything put into the clothing and barring all the rendering that I did on the skin sketch color yeah so I did that off and this is essentially where we came from I do believe on the discord I have yeah on the Discord, I have actual images of where we came from. This one's a little bit cleaner than the original, if I'm being honest. However, this is where we came from. And then we added on... Last week, we decided to do more traditional techniques, so we painted using... And this brush comes with every Photoshop download in Photoshop cc 2019 it's the dry media brush the kyle ultimate pencil hard so apart from the stitches right here on the clothing i'm sorry i said right here like they exist on the clothing right now those are just shadows i added in but apart from yeah those and give me a second i'm just adding them in Apart from the special effects on the clothing, like this right here, this is a very specific brush. You can't really see it, but if I zoom in, there we go. These slight gold is also a special brush. So apart from those, everything else has been the Kyle Ultimate Hard Pencil Brush. So you don't need any special brush to really do this. I'm just breaking this piece down so you guys can see it. If you want to see a live action drawing of this up to, I believe, the flats, you can watch last stream's video. It won't say part one. I believe it's just called traditional drawing techniques in Photoshop. And so we did that. I erased out the sketch. I think if I disable this layer, you'll see that that appeared again and I'll enable that layer all of this masking color is done on one layer and I'm just gonna give you a breakdown of what I've done on this piece since the last time you saw it so first things first I filled out those quickly sketched background figures that I did I didn't add any more detail to them than the first time you saw except now they all kind of look like a stick person um, I added some texture, so I turned that, that's the background layer, those are the background figures, and used like a star stamp and just added those, so it's not really a very specific technique. This slight texturing that you're seeing right here is the Cal Ultimate Hard Pencil Brush down to about 38% opacity and we just scrubbed it along there 
Similarly, this is just a quick sketch. You'll notice it's very loose. Some things I just gave up on. I'm sorry, I hit that point in drawing where you really just want it to be done already. Um, but the background figures, as you can see, even though they're so dark, because the background is almost the same color, all I did was brush some of the lighter color onto it and it's just a faint texture in the background, just subtle. And then this right here with the glow effect is, I'm going to control click it so you can see. So I erased some of the shapes out, but that's really just a texture. So you can use painting texture, wood texture, and just overlay it. And it should work. Delete your image afterwards. It's just a really nice way to put image and texture into your background. Um, her tattoos I broke down into two. And this is for people who are essentially new to lighting. So this layer is linear light. It's on normal mode. It's a very dark color. I changed it to linear light just as an experiment. What I'm going to do later to bring down the file size of this is I will just get this color onto a regular layer, but this is 48% opacity and you just scrub it down. You can increase opacity up and down. This has a slight inner glow just to give it a more, excuse me, a more painted feeling so that it didn't feel 100% digital. You'll notice the edges are really rough. That is from the Kyle Ultimate um, painting brush. Um, actually, let me change to it so you guys can see it. So, let me go here. You'll notice the edges are very rough. So, don't try and clean that up too much. All I did to get smoother edges was just take it all the way down and go along the edge right there. In fact, this color is the color that you're seeing along the edge right there of her chin. So very light, um, work slowly. And then on a normal layer, all I did was get a lighter shade of the color that you saw earlier and just go over it to create um, where the light is going to hit. I usually do highlights last just so that I, it's my favorite part so I tend to get really really invested in it. Let's go into the hair. The hair is mostly done by hand. Um, I'm gonna go down to the flat layer. It's in clothes. And if I turn all this down you'll notice that the base of the hair is much lighter than the actual color. That's because the highlights I plan to use are closer to this color. And so when I went in with this You'll notice parts of it still shows through. I defined the deeper areas with darker blues. There's no black in this painting. Um, take that into consideration. There is no black anywhere in this painting. Black flattens your work. And then I added more highlights, more deeper tones, and went over it with this is not the highlight, just letting you know, that's just where the light is supposed to hit. I'm going to take off that clothing sketch, the sketch color, which is defining out the shadows, as you can see. And then the smoke texture. So the smoke texture is kind of this grainy wooden texture that I overlaid onto the painting and then I erased out immediately in the shape of the smoke. And you'll note that that is its normal texture. The smoke is a this color that's in the hair just to bring it out. And then the halo color again with the added glow which is an orange that is the to pick up on this color here in the kimono or floating rocks I think yeah or floating rocks and then 
this light was done with the lasso tool I'm actually gonna show you how to do that quickly so let's come down into here what you do is you click your lasso tool you drag it straight across and then you go select modify feather my feather is automatically two pixels and I'm just gonna hit the brush steal that wonderful color and fill and then what you do is you hit your eraser smooth about 70% opacity and you just erase it out so that it comes across as streaks of light so I'm getting rid of that right now this is an overlay of blue onto the whole painting to create a more atmospheric effect and atmospheric sorry so I'm gonna just delete that and now we're just gonna move into the latter section of this which is to finish up the painting so that I was just showing you guys giving you a recap of what we did since last stream what happened how we managed to get each item done all that's really left to do on this painting I know it pretty much looks finished however if you look here the rope is not done the ropes are not done I'm using the sketch lines as a light now and that's just my kind of way of cheating and these are the original sketch lines so we're just gonna go in now with that so we'll zoom in and let's get started so I'm switching to brush and again this is the Kyle ultimate hard pencil brush this comes with Photoshop and I'm just going to what I do is I hide all of those so I don't have to deal with them. Sketch color, building sketch. Usually I delete these layers out. I haven't deleted them, mostly because I was planning on bringing this back onto the stream. I'm taking off the copious amounts of light because I'll have to deal with them as I'm working since I'm just working with flats and I don't want to have to deal with them now. And that's a good way to work if you're working with flats. So that's the sketch line and this is the color. So this is my layer. I'm gonna hide that and come down here. So what we're gonna do is go into here and I'm actually just gonna steal the color of the rock over here. This is a pale blue. Um, most of the colors in here are blue. My opacity right now is at about 100%. Um, cherish it, I'm almost never at 100% opacity. Oh, and for those of you who ask, um, what tablet I'm using. I've used two tablets for this, neither of them the Wacom Sync T. I use the Wacom Bamboo Create and I also use, excuse me, as I steal this color, I also used the Wacom Intuos Pro S. No, I didn't get a new tablet. Um, those of you who were here last week, y'all remember Jody? I'm using Jody's tablet. It's in a much better state than mine. However, this is an old tablet. This Intuos is older than the hills, and I love it. I actually love the older Wacom models more than I love the newer ones. They're like the Nokia's of tablets. Honestly, because this one's been through a car accident, mine has fallen off a balcony, and they's, they're still alive and kicking. So, if you can try and get the older Wacom model, I know everybody's talking about the new new ones, 
But um, take it from us who we put our, our tablets through some actual help. The older ones are a lot more durable and they will serve you well. Okay. There. That is much better. Let's go in there. So, um, one traditional drawing technique that I tend to use a lot is cross hatching. These little hairs right here are cross hatched. And when I zoom into here, what I'm going to do is come here, bring that down, and to render, I'm just gonna bring that out. And I mean, they're little details, but you'd be surprised what your eye picks up and what you can get away with. It doesn't have to be super clean. If your composition is good and your perspective and form are good. Not to say that my form is stunningly good in this piece. Um, Jody's not here to sass me yet. Emphasis on yet. We went to work today, um, or rather we were helping out at her dad's store today, so we've been standing since 6 this morning, so she's not out. I barely woke up for the stream today, and she's, when I say she's passed out, she's passed out. So we're here. And what I'm going to do to make this look like it's more of a part of this, I'm going to count it through there. And this is where you lose my 100% opacity, say goodbye to it. I'm back down to 70, I seem to always go to 70 and 36 as the default. So we go there, and when I go into the sketch layer, I'm just going to pull that color and draw it over. Actually, I'll do that now, because I switch between layers consistently. One thing to remember when you're trying to do traditional drawing techniques in Photoshop is you need to come to an understanding that there are places where traditional drawing techniques help and there are places where they don't. For example, if you're really good with ellipses in real life, for example, here and there and here, two of these ellipses are drawn by hand, but this giant ellipse right here is done using the lasso tool. Um, don't try and force it where it won't work, but at the same time, if you, how do I put this? Yeah, like, you can get really, really free and messy here, but don't try to force Photoshop to do what traditional drawing will do. Um, what mostly works in Photoshop in terms of traditional drawing I've discovered throughout this piece is Photoshop is really good with textures. Take advantage of that. Um, the eraser works just the same. If you want to use a perspective grid in Photoshop, you will have to wait for my next stream. That is a whole different beast in Photoshop. If you do traditional drawing and you love perspective, I will show you how to do a really quick perspective grid in Photoshop. But that this drawing did need a perspective grid. It was completely freehand. Well, as freehand as this can get. And I'm going to go into here now. Mostly, um, I choose my colors from here. I usually spitball them, but because I already chose them, now I'm just grabbing the colors since I know they already exist. 
I'm bringing my opacity all the way down to 24. I actually meant for 36, but it's not that important. And what I'm doing is I'm getting in here and I'm... This is cross-hatching again. Really important to make sure your Photoshop is not lagging when you're doing traditional drawing techniques, because... If it is, what's going to happen is Photoshop will skip strokes and you won't notice and so you won't necessarily get what you're looking for. So the reason I'm layering these colors over each other is a lot like when you work with pencil crayons is that Photoshop will allow colors to bleed through and this helps create more realistic lighting effects and I'm going to have to apologize, there's about to be a whole lot of noise in the background. It's just the AC because I'm dying of heat. I'll move as far away from it as humanly possible, but we're just gonna go back here. And I hope that is tolerable. If you guys can't hear me as clearly, just let me know and I will try and work out another solution where I can stay chilled and you guys can hear me. So I'm just using contour lines, C-curve contour lines. Um, these are not straight lines. I know it seems like an obvious thing, but for beginners, I remember being a beginner, this is not as obvious for beginners. So, just see with me if I say things that you already know. So, we do that. And in here, we're gonna actually go in a lot more. I don't wanna hide the hair, but this is behind the hair. Take that into consideration, so. There is a lot of shadow on it, so I'll go really in. And that's why I bring my opacity all the way down so I don't go too fast too quickly, which is another big issue with Photoshop and traditional drawing techniques is that Photoshop is really geared towards speed when it comes to certain things. One of them is putting down color and strokes. If you don't take your opacity down or you can't control your, pres your pressure well, you'll go way too fast, way too easily. And that's what frustrates a lot of people in Photoshop. Um, Photoshop gives you a whole lot of possibilities. And ironically enough, when you first start out, particularly if you're switching from traditional drawing, it's that's the thing that sinks you. Um, more things you should be aware of when switching for traditional drawing. If you're like the average person, you can't afford, let's just dismiss that, you can't afford a Wacom Cintiq and you will have to get used to the, give me a sec, you'll have to get used to the idea of not looking at your hands as you're drawing. It takes time and practice. Um, most people say, oh, just keep practicing. My thing is give yourself a project and work at it through a project instead of, and so we're getting into that, work at it on a project instead of just willy-nilly. Reason being is that like um form sketches or this in um if you didn't go to formal art school this in are basically your study sketches this would be a this in for me because i'm studying moon style but when you're sketching spares and cylinders and still lives and studying composition and light it can get really boring if you're trying to adjust to a whole new work technique which is to say you're trying to adjust to not looking at your hands give yourself a project 
for example, a poster, because this is a this is going to be a print. I've been requested for it to be a print. And so I'm going to work on that. However, a poster is a good way to give yourself some guidelines. My first thing I would recommend you do if it's your very first time working with a tablet is to do a quick sketch, emphasis on quick. Don't do the whole drawing, but do a quick messy sketch, scan it into Photoshop, and then go over that. And not trace, but clean it up, um, fix some issues, put down some lines, and it will get you used to the workflow process in Photoshop. I'm at the point now where I do my messy sketches inside of Photoshop. That works for me because I usually erase my sketches out and then it's not really an issue because I leave my lines, for example, if I zoom out, that right there, all these scratchy lines you see, I leave them inside right here. I leave them inside the work and so it's not that big a problem for me. Clean line art is an issue many Photoshop um, users deal with and honestly it can be your settings but more than likely it's because you haven't practiced enough. And no brush is going to fix your hand. I'm sorry, I learned this the hard way, take it from me. No brush is going to fix your hand. And so I'm going into the light areas now and you see I'm covering it up. Um, another thing that you need to understand with Photoshop that you don't actually realize with traditional art is that the fact that Photoshop gives you a full palette and when I, what I mean by a full palette is it gives you every color known to man on here. Roy straight down to G, you go down to Biff. All the way around. And the reason why this becomes a problem is that when you're working with traditional art, you're not often looking at the full palette. You are often already limited by the colors of your paint. Um, I'm sure if you are a traditional artist, you know that if you have navy blue, try as you may, you will never get this shade of blue from mixing. That is a shade of blue that only comes from a different pigment and you will have to use a different tube. Photoshop, which is what sinks a lot of people, particularly beginner artists in Photoshop, and beginner artists in general, Photoshop gives you a full palette, meaning that you get... I'm not sure if you guys are seeing this. Um, I'm gonna bring it... I'm gonna give it its own, its own little window. So I'm gonna bring it up and give it its own little window. So let's add new. Give me a second. It just occurred to me you guys not, might not be seeing what I'm talking about. So let me see if I can get this. If I can't, I'm gonna do... Okay, that's my layer. All right, let me see if I, this is color picker. If I open up a color panel, will you guys be able to see it? And let me just drag it off. Swatch, go over there and sit down for a second. My goal is so that you guys can see my color panel. And uh, 
So I'm going to try for one more minute. If it doesn't work, then I'm just going to get a picture of it and I'll explain it using that because I don't want you guys suffering for long. Okay, done, got it. And I transition. Okay, so that is my color palette and I'm just gonna drop it over here. And I'll drop it, where are you? Down there, there we go. So let me just drop it here and you guys can look at it for a while. So that's the color palette window. And now you guys can see what I'm talking about. So one thing that a lot of traditional artists don't pay attention to is the fact that Photoshop basically gives you unlimited color possibilities, which is what sinks a lot of people when going from digital art to traditional art, especially if you did not study color theory. And what I mean by did not color study color theory is I don't mean if you know your tertiary secondary I'm talking about if you know your complementary grays if you know your color theory back and forth way past secondary and tertiary colors if you've gone into complementary grays if you've gone into um, what happens when colors are next to each other all that sort of thing is that you have to limit yourself in Photoshop. And what I mean by limit is if you use, for example, if I use a huge bright red, meaning a red of the most saturated um, hue, then it's extremely hard for me to go into green. So you'll notice this green is highly desaturated. The reason for that being is that the colors will fight against each other and so usually you don't have to worry about this when you have paints or pencil crayons or pastels because you're already limited by the mere pigments that were used to create the objects you are using. However, with Photoshop, Photoshop prides itself on not giving you that barrier and so you get every color under the rainbow and it's really important that you pay attention to this if you end up with muddy colors in Photoshop or you just can't find the color you really want give some thought to the fact that it might be that you're in the wrong section of your palette for example with this blue I'm actually gonna put some um red in here specifically this tone of red but instead of pulling it from here I'm going to show you how to pull this red from the palette so first off is that this blue even though it's of this really dark value is highly saturated you might think since it's so close to black nobody will realize right but um, you're wrong they will it will stand out you'd be surprised what your eyes pick up on. So what I do is I move into this red tone and you can already see up here that this looks like a more saturated version of this color. And the reason I use this red and not this red is it's closer to the blue and so that opens up my palette a lot more. The closer the color that you're going to use to the closer the color that you're going to use is to the other color on the color wheel, for example. If I were going to use green, I could get very saturated in green because green is right next to the blue on the color wheel. However, red is quite a ways away. I believe it's one of the comp split complementary shades of blue and so I say I believe because I'm not looking at a color wheel right now, but I believe it's one of the split complementary shades of blue. I'm going to go to the red that tends 
more towards the blue meaning that it's closer to the blue than this red up here and then I'm going to go I'm going to desaturate my red in Photoshop um, other people have uh, other color wheels and you'll notice um, it's a triangle all that happens is that this point and this point have been pulled together in Photoshop this is value this is saturation and hue well hue is all over the place but I mostly work with value and saturation and so if I go up here this is the color that I want but it's way too saturated and so it's fighting the blue so what I'm going to do is I'm going to move it down to here and it's going to become that shade and you'll notice that's a really ugly shade but now this looks more like light like reflective light instead of just a color so this looks more like it's reflecting off of this it's picking up that hue and I'm gonna see how close I got sometimes I'm off Oops, I went straight into orange. I'm sorry, there's this orange color right here that you guys can't see. And I was a little bit closer. Turns out I actually went all the way up to red this time, but you'll notice it's in the same spot as where the other color was. So apparently I decided that I would care about the fact that it was so far away from the blue last time and I just came in and so I'm just grabbing that color I want the darkest hue so that it will force that red into submission and that's that mm. all right I think that's all I'm gonna do for the rope right now what I'm gonna do is grab this blue and it's not going to affect here, it's going to affect here. I'm just going to slap that on like that. And I'm only dealing with these. I'm going to come here. And yes, I am drawing individual shadows for each section of this rope. You can see why this took me a week, right? And for this area, I'm just gonna go full on dark in. And that gives, note my opacity is 24, that's why I can afford to like go like crazy over it because it's not gonna put down a lot of color. And that's the rope. So that's the rope, that's everything that's going on there. As for the color of this rope, I'm gonna, since this has all the colors from afar, that's gonna look like that. And therefore what I'm going to do here is just put that color in here. And this I can get away with, that I can't, cause I defined that one. This I can get away with to some extent. So I'm gonna pull that up to here. And that's that. Now I think we're basically done with this piece. Hi, um, hi, gotcha, weirdo. Hold on, let me. Hey, hey. What's up? Why are you crying? Why are you crying? What happened? Okay. And so we basically finished with this section of the piece. Um, there's not really a lot left to do in the piece anymore. 
I'm going to turn on back all the lights and so now you can see why I chose not to do a lot of lighting over here because the light is actually since it's an overlay it's actually lighting this by itself what I'm going to do is pull on that color Uh, don't worry it takes practice I'm still yeah it takes practice so what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over to the general brushes um, these are still my favorite brushes in Photoshop and I'm just going to go here and oh I need to bring the opacity up about 50 52 it's not that important and I'll just brighten up that area I'll come in with my eraser and erase it out and then I'll come down here to floating rocks switch back to my brush tool and darken this area so that it blends in with the hair more and that's that okay and so that's where we are for this piece what i'm going to do now is as you can see in the this corner right here that's the original inspirational piece I'm gonna move this over here so the original piece is over here and this is the piece that we did that was inspired by it um, more on traditional techniques to use in Photoshop particularly if you are new to switching over is let's see I spoke about limiting your color palette I think I should probably go more into detail for that um, using this green as an example um, so we go back here a lot of this is shades of the same red but the deepest and most saturated red is probably this let me zoom in there we go probably this red right here and to get a green that really works with this red um, what most people do is when they think green they want to go up here as the more saturated most saturated green understand that each color has its own inherent value and so if you where I put this yeah if you don't understand what the inherent values are of colors you can probably do a quick search on Google red has a darker inherent value than yellow per se um, yellow will never get to the same deep value as um, red and green simply because of I believe it's the hue but I'm a bit foggy on that part of my color series so I will review it and do a video of just that of just color theory but the most saturated green is actually somewhere down here I believe it's this but I could be wrong but it's like somewhere down here it's not this one but this one like somewhere in this circle and so once you understand that this is not the most saturated green because of the inherent value of green that's the most saturated you can come down here and then when you lighten the value you'll understand where exactly on that scale of value you are so I do suggest if you're a traditional artist switching 
into digital art, do a study of color theory. Digital color is significantly dif more different and difficult than... How do I put this? It's more difficult and it's highly different from traditional color. Traditional color limits you from the get-go. You can't make... What layer am I on? Because I, I will be over here sinking myself. Yeah, right here. Traditional color limits you from the get-go, whereas digital color prides itself on giving you limitless options. If you don't limit yourself, you're gonna find yourself struggling with color, you're gonna find yourself struggling with lines. And so, limit your color until you understand how digital color works. Um, it's not the same, and nobody switched over thinking, hey, I'm the boss at this. If all of us could do that, we probably wouldn't be suffering. Okay, and so I'm gonna go into the rocks. And I'm just bringing my opacity up by a little. Okay, so... Let's see, what else, what other traditional techniques can I talk about in here? Um, oh, perfectionism. How do I even begin to explain this? So, this is a concept that I mostly learned from... Okay, is this... Oh. This is a concept I mostly learned from 3D modeling. And basically all it says is that mistakes are the art of digital. Um, it's basically the flavor of digital. The computer likes to make things perfectly. So particularly in Photoshop, some of the things that will give you that ultra perfect, ultra clean look especially if you're not looking for that, is these hard round brushes, um, soft brush. Photoshop will do everything very precisely, so making sure that you don't make mistakes in Photoshop is actually working against you. And when I, what I mean by mistakes is you don't want a crooked line, you don't want this, you don't want that. If I take this off, or actually I don't even need to take this off, you can see here that I fudged that perspective. It's not that important, it's not the focal of my piece. The light on this is also roughly done, I did it with the lasso tool. Um, oh, this light is a good example of what I'm talking about. So when you do light beams with the lasso tool, which is my favorite thing to do, and I've done this several times already, this video is all for different reasons. So, and I'm pretty sure I'm on the floating rock slayer, but that's all right. You will notice that I haven't... The line is very straight. It's perfectly straight actually and this works against you in Photoshop in that when you see light you're never seeing the perfectly straight light beam. You always see fuzzy edges because you see the dust particles and so a good thing to do would be to modify it, soften those edges with feathers and then do that. And you can see that the edges are slightly more softened. Let me zoom in so you can actually see it. 
and then you can go in with your eraser brush and erase it out get rid of those hard edges getting rid of that ultra perfect Photoshop feel is basically what you're gonna spend most of your time doing if you're trying to get a more traditional feel to your artwork in Photoshop I just wanted to get to it. So don't be afraid to be a bit more messy. This smoke effect is probably the messiest thing on here. Similarly, I don't know if you guys saw the background figures, but if I turn the background off and I turn the floating rocks off so you can see. Background figures are really really simple really really crude don't go too far too fast in photoshop when it comes to these things don't be afraid to be messy don't get trapped in the idea that hey it needs to be perfect or else you're just gonna end up sinking yourself um another thing not to get trapped in and i'm actually gonna scroll up down to here is and I'm kind of calling myself out on this right now. Know when to stop. So don't be afraid to like... Photoshop lets you do a lot, but know when to stop. Let yourself stop. And so taking my own advice i'm going to let myself stop because the only thing left to do on this was really that um where's yeah the only thing left to do on this was really this cord right here and so it's done i am turning this into a triptych and so file new and that's going to be poster and create. So I'm gonna start another one of these from scratch, which will help a lot of people. Um, figure this out. All right, so. Since I have a very Japanese festival theme for hair, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go down to here. I use colored lines to sketch, so don't pay too much attention to the craziness that I'm about to do. And what I'm gonna do is save this. I'm gonna save it okay so that needs some time to save because the file is huge i'll clean it up later all right so while that's saving i'll come over here and we can work on this and i'm going to do a companion piece to this Meaning that since this is a festival goer, I'm going to do a similar festival goer over here. Originally, I planned for the two sides of the triptych to be more complex floating rocks. But I think maybe a girl with an umbrella would be better here. And so i'm going to use the cal ultimate hard pencil and hard pencils are usually used in sketching so don't be afraid to get into those brushes um i'm gonna take my flow up to about 80. it says 82 but it's not really that much of a thing and what we do is many artists like to use whoops see daisy Many artists like to use more... I know the perspective. Okay. I'm gonna have to zoom out on this because I keep dragging it out of the window. 
So many artists like to get um, very technical on perspective or they go into value. I usually start with a sketch because that's my workflow. So that's what I'm doing now is drawing out the blob. And I think that's Jody, you guys. Hey. Hey. Um, uh, sure. I started the second part of the triptych. Okay, so going back here, going back into this umbrella, the perspective's already wrong, I can tell this. Actually, it should be more like so. And the only reason I know that is because I do a lot of sketching on this quite frequently. So you'll get a feel for it as you do more practice, as you do more sketching. So it's actually a lot like that. Curve that here and that would be the umbrella. And I'm actually going to go in with my eraser. Usually I just leave any lines I put down, but for the sake of not confusing people who are not used to watching me sketch, I keep track of my lines very well, so it doesn't confuse me, but I've been told that it confuses other people, so I'm trying to improve on that. So switching back to brush, that's where the umbrella is, and the reason I'm doing a Japanese umbrella is actually because I found one in this room. <laughs> what? I got inspired, Jodi. You wanna uh, say hi? I guess so. Okay, hold on guys, for Jody. Hello! Okay, so <laughs> that was Jody. Um, oh, that was you! Yeah! I'm sorry. So Jody messaged me on Discord and I completely miss it. missed it. So there we go. Um, the center of my sphere is map. out here somewhere. So I draw that down. Okay. Oh, actually, could you pass the umbrella? I'm not going to open it, I just want to use the rod to check where my perspective is. So I actually have an umbrella in my hand right now. I think it was my... I think it was my... Okay. And so, um, this line is off filter. It's here. Alright, so I have the umbrella in my hand right now. and. For those of you on the Discord, I will I'll send you a picture of the umbrella that I found in my room when we cleaned out the attic before I came here. So that's more that. And so What I'm doing now is I'm drawing her head and it's a three-quarter view. Understand it's a three-quarter view but it's from the back. So I have to reverse this because that's going to go there and so this is going to come down to here. And then this line becomes the line that connects from the brain to the spinal cord, and so this is her neck. And I implore you, study your anatomy. I'm not saying do dints and sketches. Um, study it. My favorite thing to do is to do the sketches in a way that... Um, how do I put this? Do the sketches in a way that make you make for interesting pieces. So, for example, when I was studying the ribcage um, skeleton, what I did was I drew I drew it from an actual skeleton, but then I added a snake from the spinal cord right here. I added a snake's skeleton on top of it. 
and I made it into a more interesting piece. I'm not a person who can sit down and do um, dancing sketches or practice sketches for no long period for a long period of time. I tend to have to do more elaborate pieces and so I do a lot of elaborate pieces, a lot of quick sketches, um, a lot of short projects because that's how I work. Um, find what works for you and what I'm going to do is just to make sure I'm getting this perspective right is I'm gonna do that. Woo, it's fighting me. There was a bit of lag just there on Photoshop. So I bring that up and minimize that. My center is here. If I hold Alt, it comes out to here. And I'm a little bit off on the perspective. You can see it there. So what I'm going to do is, whoops, switch to the brush. And this is a good way to use Photoshop's um, digital capabilities to your advantage. So I pretty much got it, but just to fix the sketch, that's the angle of the umbrella because my center is out here. And so I use using the marquee tool, the elliptical marquee tool, holding out alt, you can bring it here and get a pretty good sketch. Um, in traditional art, you would have done that with a compass. Um, a marquee tool is a really good way of doing that. If you're not good with um, eyeballing these things, guys, just lay um, you, there's so many other ways to do this, and I'm just going to cut that. Go to the Move tool, move that down, and select it. This is a sketch layer, so I'm not concerned about any messy lines that I might see here. Um, This is looking more like the perspective I'm looking to have. Her chin goes under there, comes out to here, goes down. I know it as a shoulder bone. I know there's like a formal name for it and my Atlas of Human Anatomy is staring at me with faithful eyes right now. Because I don't remember the name. Is it Scapula? I believe it's scapula, but it's kind of shaped like that. I know this, then there are the vertebrae. Don't, don't start drawing your anatomy. It's good to know the underlying shape of the bones. It helps you get the form lines of the body much more easier. Um, of course, you tend to just make up stuff for stylistic preferences later on in life, but... Um, when you first start out, this is good. Um, this is also going to be a moon inspired piece. The same piece is inspiring this. Um, if you don't know who Moon is, Moon is a graffiti artist. Oh, thank you so much. Moon is a graffiti artist. Sorry, I didn't know how much you wanted. This is fine. Okay. Um, yes, so Moon is a graffiti artist. I went um on his Instagram last stream. The picture that you're looking at in the top right hand corner is the picture from Moon's article. Um, if you're really interested in seeing more of Moon's work, you can scroll down into the description. It's at the bottom. I have a link to his Instagram, his YouTube, and his YouTube. And on his Instagram, you should be able to find a link to his official website where you can get more stuff. Okay. Thank you. Absolutely. I might come up later. Okay. I might conk out again. It's oh, I told them. I told them. I told them why you were that we died today. We died today. Yes, that we died today. You know, we're just wandering spirits. Oh yeah. Okay, and so. Um, Okay. And so, um, 
what I noticed here is that I have the shoulder blade here and give me a second I'm working out some anatomy right now um, her shoulder is there and ooh, this is not nice at all so I think I need to turn the umbrella more because something about this perspective is wrong I'm just looking at them to see you okay windows if you want to see how your work will line up to next to each other you go to window arrange and what you do is you float all in window and then you can just do that And let me just check to make sure this is projecting properly. And it's not, so give me a second and I will... Okay, so because of how I have this displaying, float all in window is not showing up for you guys. But I'm just gonna go back to tab cons consolidate all to tabs so that you guys have a view again. So just so that you guys have a view again, and then I'll switch into this one just to make sure it's showing up for you guys. Okay, it is. Alrighty then. So, um, when you consult, when you float all in Windows, when you go to Window Arrange, float all in Windows. What Photoshop will do is it will hold on to your. It will shape the window to the shape of your artwork and literally float them all as little floating windows within Photoshop. What this does is it allows you to move the two drawings next to each other so you can see exactly where we fall on there we go so you can see exactly where we fall in terms of how your pictures will look next to each other. I use this way as opposed to artboards because with artboards you, you end up using a lot more memory. And so I'm doing here. What I'm going to do now is increase the canvas size. Now to get the original measurement back, since I already have one that is in there, I have no qualms in doing this. So 18, I'm going to move that out to like, call that 25. Okay, so width is 18, move that out to 25. Let's try this again. So it's 18 by 24. If I hit relative, I want that to be 20. And so that becomes 38 by 24, which is still weird. So let me just add these out. So I'll move that to 30. And that's six. So, yeah, it was right. 24. Okay. And what that did was that increased the size of our canvas. And the reason I increased the size of our canvas is so that I could. Have more working paper. So, in. Traditional drawing, you often have the advantage of having a huge piece of paper around that you can use, you can cut off stuff, 
Digital makes that a bit harder because you get the urge to fill the canvas. And so another way you can prevent yourself from doing that is... Actually, let me, let me show you the other way you can prevent yourself from doing that. So I'm just going Control Z. And you'll see the canvas went back to its original size. I'm going to create a new layer. And I'm going to fill it with... Yeah, this dark gray color, fill it, and image, canvas size, this is 24, this is 30, this is okay, and you'll notice the background added, the background color. When it increases, it uses whatever color your background is, so... You can just turn that back to white. And this gives you the barriers of where your original canvas was. It's a much easier way to work and makes life easier for you, I guess, in the long run. This umbrella is giving me issues, um, mostly because I know the perspective is wrong, not on the umbrella, but on the stick. So, another way to do this in Photoshop is to go there, hit Ctrl T, go into Perspective. Alright, and yeah, so we were looking more of like that, and I had it all the way up, so, and I'm not really too worried, so what I'm going to do is, since I know that's the direction now, I'm just going to erase that out of the sketch. So these are the ways you can use Photoshop to help you move faster. Oh, forgive me, let's see, that's the color I'm looking for, there we go. So I know it's this way now, I told you really fast and loose with this. And so now this becomes... My center has changed, and so now I'm going to erase this. I'm going to take this opportunity to move the umbrella onto a different layer. That's there. This direction. And since my center has moved to there, I hit Alt and that's what we're looking for. D. And so, constraining my lines. And that helps us get a much quicker sketch of what we're looking for in Photoshop. And now from here, slightly raised, so I need to bring this up, down, her arm comes up, so her arm is down here, her arm comes up, and there. And that's a bit hard of a line, but I'm not too worried about it. And 
and her face is hair. What I'm trying to decide what to do right now is what hairstyle to give her. So I'm trying to decide what hairstyle to give her, so please do see with me. Um, thinking about this structure, I need to go take my own advice and revisit my anatomy lessons. So I've got the perspective on the umbrella. Um, perhaps, yep, that's it. That's what's messing me up. Okay, so I did this whole sketch on the umbrella layer, so I'm just going to move that back. Get my umbrella back, move that down. And understand that your shoulder is usually the length of your head. Foreshortening changes that. But when you're looking at the full length of your shoulder from dead on, it's usually the length of your head. And I'm just using basic forms to kind of um, flesh out the perspective here. Uh, I know that there's a bone right here, and so that's looking like that. The spinal cord is here and we have S-shaped spinal cord so I'm looking this far there. And so I'm thinking this goes right here. The armpit is here and so this comes over like so. Whoops, nope, not like so. The armpit is here and so this comes over like so. because the arm that I'm drawing is actually over here. And so this perspective is actually a little bit wrong. We're looking for that. And give me a second guys, I have to take a bit of a break and let's see, intermission. second I'm just switching back to that be right back and transition There we go. Be right back.
Okay. And I'm back. Um, give me a second. My Photoshop is stalling on some stuff, but I'll just transition you guys back to the back page. And we're back to back big. Um, Alright, so this is the center of our triptych. And. All right, let's see if Photoshop is willing to work with me now. All right, so give me a second. Photoshop appears to have crashed. Not that big of a deal. Oh no, it didn't crash. Yay! That is beautiful. So I'm searching. Man, that, that image is just large. No wonder it's throwing a tantrum. Alright, so I'm switching back to hair. And this is a part of the triptych. So that is the centerpiece, the one that we worked on last week. And this is our second piece. So what we were getting at before I had to take the break is... The perspective issues. So you can really just... Uh, use Photoshop to your advantage, meaning that you can draw the item that you want in perspective. Lasso -y your tool right there, Control T, and just use the perspective tool. There we go. to sort of finagle it into position. There we go. And that has consequently shortened it a lot more than I thought it would, so I'm gonna just lengthen that. The vanishing point for this is down here. So I keep my perspective good in my head again we will have a video just on perspective later but we're now doing a brand new poster from scratch so that is what we're looking at right now going into here I'm rounding off this edge because I'm just dealing with the torso right now and that's gonna roll under the scapula. I do believe it's the scapula. If I'm getting this bow name wrong, let me know. Been a good while since I opened my Atlas of Human Anatomy. And what I'm sketching right now is the shape of the bone to, just to get an idea of where the planes are, what the form is. I'm not really leaving a lot to the imagination there because the clothing that I will put on her will be heavenly dependent on getting the form of her back right. Um, there is a dip in your head. And so we bring that over here. I haven't really begun shaping the cheek yet. That just happened as a consequence of me sketching. So I'm just going to put that line there so that I remember that. And hey, Dai. Um, <laughs> yeah, I really like it too. It is. Uh, Bossa Nova music 
by Cafe Music BGM. I'm a I'm a Ghibli geek, so haha. <laughs> um, all right, so. And uh, kind of drawing that out. Remind me. Actually, I can do it right now. I'm gonna take a picture of the Japanese umbrella I am currently using as a reference for this piece. I was saying earlier how I found this umbrella hiding in the room. For no unspecified reason, my room in the attic has... Okay, wow. I'm... This umbrella is really, really old. And so I'm being extremely careful with it. But for those of you in the Discord, I will send you a picture of it right this instant. This old Japanese umbrella that I found in the attic. So you guys can see the reference is currently floating right next to my bed. And I I had to move it out of position just now, but I have it positioned in perspective. So let's share this with you guys so you can see it in the Discord. I'm not giving any context. I'm just gonna drop it in the Discord and we'll see who figures it out. Um here we go. So now that the hand is here, let's close that down. Let's go down. So I do a little ghost drawing and the hand comes up here. And that is basically a rectangle that I will spend my life on working it out that perspective there we go and then the triangle that i will spend the other half of my life on goes that way that way and that way and so i'm just using those very messy shapes to work out the basic form of what I'm drawing. There we go. Alrighty then. So now that we've done this and we're working on the other poster I got. I'm not really gonna have her other hand as being visible. Perhaps I might. I might give a background here. Maybe scooping fish since this seems to be leaning towards a Japanese festival vibe so I might do a whole background of her scooping fish in which case her other hand will be there with a the scoop but for right now and that's that that's that that's that there we go and I'm sure something's off there but hey And there, I'm working out her hair whirl right now. I'm thinking maybe that direction. And her hairstyle. So I already have it swept one way here. If I turned her around, her hair would be blocking her face, which I'm actually gonna draw it on this. Her hair would be blocking her face that way. 
and I mean that would be um I mean it would be consistent but I mean it really is blocking her face and I'm not sure I like that so I'm gonna take my eraser brush go over that and try it with a different hairstyle perhaps I'll make this a different person so we switch back to that brush and maybe straight her hair and I'm actually gonna close this umbrella I'm very worried about it it's very brittle and so I'm gonna close it for now. I don't really want it balancing under its own weight. And those of you watching the stream right now... For those of you watching the stream right now, I am give me a second, I am getting Getting the image of the umbrella so that you guys can see it. The everybody in the Discord gets things first, guys, because it's just the easiest way for me to get things done. No, and so I'm just about to edit paste. That's the umbrella that I am looking at right this moment. Um, yeah, so that's the umbrella I'm looking at. I've closed it now, but as you can see, it's got very beautiful watercolor paintings on it that is rice paper you're looking at. And it's got a um, damaged frame at the top. I'm very sad about that frame because it's quite a beautiful um, piece of... Quite a beautiful object. Um... I'm thinking I'll make her skin tone green. I'm not liking this hair either. I think it's rather plain. So I'm going trolling for inspiration. That's what you're hearing now. And uh, 
Um, hmm. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to give her a ponytail. So, well, what I'll do is I'll make her hair super swoopy. I'll get this hair out of the way. And what I'm doing is I'm thinking Betty from Archie, the Archie comics right now. When I think of this very swoopy hairstyle, but a little bit more refined, I guess. And I'm gonna add the ponytail, but I'm actually liking the hair a lot at this level. So, and there are hairpins that you can't see. Maybe I'll make the umbrella a transparent umbrella. That could work. I've never tried an object this large transparent before. But let's. Alright, so I'm not liking this ponytail. I think I'm just not liking the way I drew it. Let's try something a little bit more out there. Alright, so... And we're just experimenting now. This is really the area where you want to experiment, want to try stuff before we get into painting and everything else. them a bit. I think I'm getting ideas. I could put floating stones here. Play with the idea of her hair floating with these stones. And I already have another I already have another um kimono ish item. I'm looking for perhaps a different feeling so thinking maybe this is a festival of monsters or something so I'm actually going to go to Google Translate. And I'm going straight to Japanese and
Alright, so I'm going to give her a tattoo on her back. So I'm actually going to do myself a favor and switch out of this brush. For the effect I'm looking for, I think an inking brush would be better. I'm going to make it bigger. And... There we go. Okay, so I've already started doing this stroke the wrong way. And I need it high enough where you can see the phrase. So let's start it here. Uh huh, this is wrong. So we're looking for Suki no Shutsu, which is Moonrise, I'm being told. I will check my Japanese dictionary later, because this is just a sketch, but right now Google Translate is going to be it. Um, Okay, so the bottom half of Shutsu is not there. However, I do believe um, I am going to do her body. I'm gonna merge these down eventually. So from here. What we're looking for is the lasso tool. So we're coming here. There. 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 And there. That's not completely correct, but I'm eyeballing it, spitballing it. And there's a lot of see-through lines in this. There we go. Move that down. Move it over. And I'm going to... Bring that down. Sink. If I do that, there we go. So that side's down. And what I'm going to do now is that's there. We're looking at like there. And that will be our goldfish pond. So I'm just gonna draw little fishies. There. That is the most beautiful fish you're getting from me in the sketch stage. I'm <laughs> Just letting you know. Hi, Tony! 
Um, all right. So I have my lawyers, and we are ready for you to sign over. Um, no. <laughs> I will not sign over Lockdown to you, Tony. No. I can give you a cookie for your troubles, though. We can pay your, your lawyers in cookies. <laughs> we can definitely pay your lawyers in cookies. Don't worry about it. They will not go unpaid for all their troubles. Um, and so, since we're here, thinking I want the other person to be wrong here. Well, I say person in the loosest sense. I'm listening to Studio Ghibli right now, so you can probably guess where my inspiration is coming from <laughs> with this character. Um, what I'm going to do is, it's a little bit inspired by No Face. Okay, a whole lot of inspired by No Face. Let's not go a little bit. But who am I joking with? Um, I, I'm going to see if I can cut through here though. And I just had a better idea. So let's go into here. <laughs> Um, okay, we can do chocolate chip cookies. We can most definitely do chocolate chip cookies. I'll give them a cake for free. There you go. Yeah. Sorry, still not signing over lockdown to you. <laughs> um. <laughs> okay, so I'm erasing this and. The reason being is because I got a even better idea for what I want this stall attendant to be. And if I remember correctly, Okay, right. So, Teru Teru Bozu. That's what they're called. That's what I remember them as. So, this stall attendant is going to be a Teru Teru Bozu. And I'm going to do my standard U face. And this Terra Terra Bozu is going to have 
a piece of paper, which actually shows what it's feeling. So we're thinking like that. I think Terry Terabozu are adorable. Let's see what's going on here. Um, Nino is at her house. I no longer live with her anymore. I've been moving a lot. <laughs> I've been moving a whole lot. Yeah. Hey, Vaughn. <laughs> yeah. Um, actually, today is the 17th. I lied. Nino's not at her house today. She's gone to a whole nother state on the other side of the country. So she's gone visiting people. And let's erase that. I think the contrast in the face should be more... Okay, so my Photoshop is lagging. I'll fix that face, but definitely not a happy face. Um, this is my original composition, and I believe I was talking earlier about the compulsion to fill the canvas. This is what I'm talking about. So I have started filling this canvas. I hope she's going to the other side to give me a sword. She knows how I love swords. I will ask her next time I speak to her. <laughs> I was there. There was definitely high-fiving that went on yesterday. Okay. That's the body. These two I think I can merge now. I'm not making too much of a fuss about that. Oh, for since you guys are all here, I'll show you the final piece. This is the final, 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 mostly because I've officially hit lazy, um, version of that poster. I've actually been requested to make this a print, so I'm looking for a manufacturer. But as of right now, it's just a digital image. So that's the final image, and I've decided to make it a triptych. So that means there's going to be three other pieces just like it. Um. What are you talking about, Tony? Didn't I already do that? I think you're missing. I think you're losing some memories there. I think you're losing memories, Tony. And so I'm gonna give this Terra Terra Bozu feet because I've always wondered what was under. And how did hanging dolls become the, um, There we go. I'm gonna give this Terra Terra Bozu some feet. Little pointed feet. I won't give it any hands, I think it's kind of weird, but I will give it like a curve, like an idiot hair curve. Uh, thank you, Fawn. Tony, you're missing you're missing out on your own your own portrait. I I just don't know what's going on. So I think this is basically the composition. 
I'm going to open the grid. First, I'm going to file, save this as an image, Ima the image files, and I want to save this as a JPEG. And save. So this file is so huge, I don't know if you guys can see it. No, you can't. This file is so huge that there is literally a loading bar right here. So that's why I haven't switched back over to the other screen. So... But it's moving pretty quickly. It's almost... it's done. And okay, so that will save in the background. I can go back to this now. Oh, oh, wow. Okay, so... <laughs> um, we can give you some computer juice for that, Tony. <laughs> Locktone technology. You can use technology from Locktone. <laughs> You can definitely use technology from lockdown. We won't, um... I'm just fleshing out the mechanics of this world now. Like I'm drawing with a sharpie marker. And that's the rope. Oh, okay. I'm thinking for here. And she's over here. Now I don't want to get rid of anything. You see, this is a problem with drawing on a bigger canvas. Based on where this is cut out, you're not going to be able to read the full tattoo, so I might make that tattoo shorter and just put it on her neck. I do like this. Um, we're just going to see what this composition actually looks like if I cut it. So. Do this, select, inverse, and on the new layer, I'm just gonna. And that's what our composition is looking like right now. It's a lot tighter. I do like that one. It's a lot more tighter. And this is the same size as this. So we'll come here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch out, that's the capture window, Done. 
I'm just changing the image screen, that's all that's happening. It just took over my screen just now. And I'm gonna put it on the opposite corner. There we go. So I'll turn that off for now. And this is a crop over there. Just to remind me where I'm cropping to. And we'll go back to editing in here. Um, energy drinks make me feel like, how do I put this? It's, I feel like a hyperactive hyena. Like, I, I feel like I'm just ready to snap at anybody, so I drink tea. Um, the slightly twitchy leg concerns me though. Um, maybe you're one of those people they're taking the energy from, Tony. You know, the energy in energy drinks has to come from somewhere. Maybe you're one of the people they're taking it from. You never know. So, we're here. The fish are here. And I think this is basically as clean as this is going to get. So now I'm going to start putting down color. So I'll take that off. And wow. So in order to make sure it matches with the other one, I'm going to import the reference file that I was using from Moon. So I'm just gonna use place and I'm just gonna link it. And I believe it's on the desktop, is it? Nope, lies, I'm lying. Wow, I didn't mean to do that. Found it. So I'm gonna place both files, place it, and I'm actually gonna put that there. Cancel. I'm gonna put it up at the top, then file, place linked. I'm going to grab the original image. And I'm also gonna place it there. So I have these two images to work on. And both of these I'm just gonna lock. And the base color of my entire image is going to be. This green right here. Because I really love this color and I was unable to use a lot of it in the other... So I'm just gonna bring that down. I will eventually merge all these layers down. Not too concerned about it. I feel like I say that a lot. I'm not too concerned about it. And now I'm going to go back to the same brush that I use to do this, which is the Kyle Pencil Hard Ultimate Brush. Bringing that out, scroll down. Um, just a public service announcement. If you are a fan of either of these games, Hyper Light Drifter and Mutant Year Zero Road to Eden, Epic Games is currently giving them away for free. 
So, if you're if you're a fan of those games, now is your time. This is your moment. Epic Games is giving them away for free. All you need is the Epic Games launcher, which you can get, um, I believe, if you download Unreal Engine. I believe you can also get the Epic Games launcher all on its own. But Hyperlight Drifter and Mutant Tier Zero Road to Eden are currently free from Epic Games. <laughs> Fun that I got him at free. So just letting you guys know that I'm about to go into this now. We're about to put down color. So I'm putting that green down. And this is the green that I absolutely fell in love with in the other piece that I wasn't able to use a lot of, predominantly because of this red. And green is the complement of red, blue is the split complement, so don't worry too much about it. So, we're going to use the same techniques as last time. We're going to use more traditional techniques. And we're just going to change the hair. I don't want her to look like a Christmas goblin, so I'm not gonna make her hair um, red, which was my first instinct. So we're just putting that green down. taking the flow down to 52 and what I'm stealing is the purple and I think purple will make an excellent color for her hair so now she can just look like a cotton candy machine I find that I like this, it looks more busy, but I like this hairstyle a lot because it looks a little bit more refined. So I'm working, I'm gonna work with this and then I'll find something else to do with those floating stones. Perhaps I'll still have it on her hair. but we'll see. Still have our hair floating out into the eons of history. So, putting down them flats. Whoopsie daisy. Um, alright guys, so I made a big boo-boo, which I'm hoping I can correct here. I don't need it to be contiguous. And delete. Okay, so boo boo fixed. Hee <laughs> hee. So I was drawing on the background there, so I just took it out. I forgot to lock it. So we're working more like that. They're in the same place, so I'm going for this blue. And I'm just... No, I'm not even going to try that right now. Maybe I'll just fix this sketch 
So, I'm going to erase this. Maybe a puff on one side. I really do like this idea of floating stones. I think somehow I managed to cover this. So let's get back that and I'll get rid of that. And I'm checking comments again now. Okay. Stream ends in about 30 minutes, so my aim is to get at least a basic sketch down. And again, throughout the week, I'll update you guys on what's going on, where we are at, and maybe I will have another stream of this. I'm not sure. Perhaps during the week if I have time. Um, there we go. Her tattoo is basically on this layer. Oh, wrong color. Switch to this beautiful blue. And the opacity is not there, so I'm just going to bring it up. Okay, I like this idea, this, I like this, it's a lot more elegant, a lot more refined. This is still her hair, I'm going to have it on this side as well. So these floating ringlets, with her hair floating there. And then... I'll have perhaps the same thing here. Playing with it, I like the idea of this wispy floating here, but that one is not working for the composition. I think that's probably it. Um, Let's work on her clothes, because right now it looks like she's not wearing any. So. Do 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 do. And I am going to put a pattern on the rice paper. That's going to be for another day. What I am going to try and work out though is the perspective line of these sticks. I believe I can divide them using Photoshop and not by hand. Or at least creating a guide with Photoshop. But for right now, I'm just going to put in some placeholder lines and perhaps I'll put a dot on my screen to remind myself where the center is. It's approximately here. Um, I'm going to make a Terra Terra Bozu. I will show you guys the Terra Terra Bozu that I make to use as reference for this drawing. So. I'm probably going to be taking a lot of pictures of the umbrella and I will I'm going to make a territory both to use as references for this drawing. I'm also going to go harass my friends with tattoos to see how those actually look. So um 
this is the only warning they're getting and they missed it so hey it's not my fault I did warn them so this is more flat round style this is more realistic style so I want this to match this so I'm going to come over here I am going to change that and come down here look at all those layers guys look at all them layers it's disgraceful what am I doing there you go and with the white you can see that I didn't fully erase everything on this layer but that's okay. I will incorporate the sketch into the painting as I did with the other one. What we're fully looking on getting done right now is to fix this terror terror bozo. So what I'm going to do is make this layer less I'm going to change this shade of blue, bring that down to there, and I think I can work with this. So I just believe that, or perhaps I should wait for the reference, because the reference will help me work out where the creases in the material is. I mean, this is very cartoony, and I like my cartoony style, I just don't think it's working well for this piece. Um, so, perhaps more materials, thinner lines, and this looks more like a Terry Terry Bozu. Than the others. So I'm gonna take that off. And would you look at that? I was catching on the wrong there. Beautiful. So let's. Yep, see? But I already did a sketch, so it should be easy to just reproduce the lines. So there. And if I turn this off, we're looking at more that, more loose flowy lines, thinner, more gentle lines. Um, as a consequence of having all of this organic shape, I do believe that I'm going to make a more geometric pattern on this umbrella. I'm not quite sure yet, but just something to add some contrast. <laughs> it wasn't on purpose. <laughs> I actually drew my flats on layer one, <laughs> but I created a new layer one. Don't disown me. <laughs> See, I created a whole new layer one. I've got like 15 layers in here already <laughs> and I haven't done anything yet. <laughs> And before I repeat my mistake, let's go in here. All of these layers will be getting names. It's just because there's 30 minutes left and I really don't feel like going through all of that right now. So let's take that down. So this territory bozo looks so cute. 
Too bad it's actually upset with her, right? And then... I think I'm going to give it a cuter... Tie. So I'm gonna give it like a... Because Tertar bosses are usually cute, right? So I'm gonna give it like a ribbon. And then... Like, there. And then from the ribbon, we can have... This rippling... Flyer... That has the upset face on it. Whoops. Not the sad face, the upset face. Maybe I'm just in love with that face. Maybe that's what's happening here. Um, I don't know if they're still here, but I think they were. <laughs> yeah, I paid Tony off in cookies. Um, he was trying to legally own Lockdown again. I think he plans to enslave them, and I'm trying to protect them from his, um, Enslavement. Okay, so that's that. And this layer is supposed to be the upset layer. And below this, at his feet, is the fish tank. Which will have the goldfish. I would put other things other than goldfish in here, except I'm not sure if the reference will hold if I don't have goldfish in here. And... Oh, I know. I can strengthen the reference by adding fish scoops. So, um, I don't know if this is how it actually works, but I'm going to put fish scoops right here. And perhaps on her arm. Oh, is my music finished? Wow! No! That's so sad. I'm just gonna... There we go. So... I left his hair off. His little curl. And his feet, which I think I need to bring back.
Okay, so those are the fishes. I feel like I will have to get a lot of references for this piece since I'm not familiar um, with a lot of what's going on here. It's not a part of my culture. So if you have any Japanese friends, send them my way. Okay. And I think I've recreated this enough that I can delete this layer. Okay, her lip is definitely on the other side, so we can't see it. I am highly exaggerating her eyelashes so that you can uh, understand where we're going here. And... Oh! Okay, yay! Thank you to Gacha Weirdo for subscribing. Thank you! I just got a very nice notification. Thank you so much. And there we go. This is where I'm looking right now. I think the feet will get lost if I. So I'm just gonna grab these two layers, Control E, merge them. There we go. Okay, so I put some sketches on this layer, but that's okay. Um, this is here and hair. Okay. So I have these wispy strands blowing back and they're connected by this. Um, what I'm thinking of doing is the floating stones from the other piece. I want to put them here so that they float around I'm going to give her a necklace of floating stones. For no other reason than I think it would look cool. I may give some meaning to these stones later, but for right now, I'm just trying to incorporate elements of the other here. Um, I really don't want to put her in a kimono. So I'm brainstorming mm, I might more directly look at this outfit from the original reference. So, okay, yeah, maybe a low scooped back. I mean, we don't all wear kimonos to festivals in Japan. Maybe we don't. <laughs> I don't know. I'm trying to figure it out. Just let me know. I read some weird things each day. So I read today 
um, or no, I didn't read it. On Instagram today, I saw a study of Grecian clothing. And I think I'm going to do that here. I know it's kind of weird mixing Greek clothes with, um... A Japanese-themed festival project. But I think that we will be missing enough of the clothing for it not to clash. Yes, I do believe. Yes, it's working. So I will have to curve that tattoo in much more. But um, the post that I saw was um, explaining the structure of this gown. Actually, let me get a whole new layer for this. So I'm gonna come here. The post that I saw was explaining the structure of this garment in Greek culture which I see a lot of goddess wear and a lot of women wear in paintings. This very flowy robe. And it's rather beautiful, right? So... And their arms went through it like so. And it turns out this is simply this. Actually, let me... Like, understanding the structure of the clothing makes them a lot easier to draw. So it turns out that is actually... So if I put a person here, and their hands go here, that is actually just... The two sides of the garment sewn shut. It's a giant rectangle. Two sides of the garment sewn shut. And... Just like so. And then... A rope is tied around it to cinch the waist in. So that's where we get these. So that's my quick clothing study. And I just drew the top of that garment on top of her. I'm gonna double check my Instagram later to see where I found that. Instagram and Pinterest are a great place to just pick up information without even knowing it. Um, I say that for Instagram only if you tend to follow artists that do a lot of explanation of their art. If you don't, Instagram's a great place to look at food, which makes you hungry. Um, so... It's a Greek style garment, but I think that we're not seeing a lot of it, and therefore we can pass it off as just being modern day clothing. And from here, this is not hair, these are. The similar strings to what's around her neck here, I am hanging them from her hair. And then on her shoulder, I will probably put the tattoos along her shoulder and encircle her back. Or maybe I will do the tattoo pattern on her umbrella. These are ideas I have. If you have any ideas for what I can do, Welcome back, Fun. Uh, if you have any ideas for what I can do to translate this 
pattern to here. Um, let me know. I think this is the first time I've done the back view of a character in a long, long time. Ow. And so, let's go here. Taking that purple again. And my opacity is high enough, so I'm just gonna go here. Onto the hair. And I just realized the floating stones are not in this one. I think I missed a layer when saving this picture. So I'm gonna go back and fix that later for the final post of it in the Discord and the Instagram. As for these floating stones, um, I'm not quite sure what color I want to do them, but I'm feeling this red now. Not that red, but this one. And I'm feeling it here. I think that gives just a little bit of color where it needs to be. So I'm doing the reverse of this where the more muted colors of this have taken over. And this is here. and. But I'm doing the same background because I want them to feel as if they're in the same place. So coming here. And now I'm gonna do that. So it works for now. I'm taking that out. I think I might have to do a different background color. Not so sure just yet. But. We will work on it. So I've got just a few more minutes. And let's see what else we can get done here. This circle right here is... Oh, it's the cylinder I used to get the perspective. And I'm thinking I want to do that blue on the umbrella because I remember I said I was contemplating doing a completely transparent umbrella so let's try that idea out now. So I'm going to be playing with these colors until I find something that works, so... Whoa! Rip, my mouse. Alright, so this is looking a lot more interesting now. And I'm thinking maybe the same color for her dress. And I want to move the opacity of this up. Hair. 
All right, this is looking like where we are now. The Terror Terror Gozu is usually white. I'm thinking since this is green, I'm going to go with a very pale shade of I mean, this is green, so let's go with a darker shade or a pale shade of green. Like a deeper shade of that. Desaturate it just a bit more. And let's play with that color. And. I mean, all the Terra Terra Bozu I'm seeing are white. Some of them have patterns on them, so maybe I will make a white one with patterns. Not feeling this. And that's looking more like a color I can live with. So let's slap dash that color down. And control U, maybe. Yeah, we can just have a Ghostbusters green territory both of Um I'm actually gonna go zero. I'm playing with the um whoops it is a I'm playing with the hue and saturation right now, so and I don't know if you guys are seeing this. Yeah, you are. Okay, click click click. Oh, hey! Welcome to our stream. <laughs> or welcome back. I'm not sure which one of those it is. Come on. Cancel. Okay, so this is where we're working with right now. And we've got our Territor Bozu. Let's grab this bluish color here. So Putting that blue in right there. I want it to look more white even though this is a green color, which is a skill that I gain and lose as I practice. Mostly as I come to understand how colors work with each other. Um, life's pretty good right now. Um, I spent the whole week doing the image that you see in the bottom left corner and I did a job today which was um, basically dealing with delivery people. That was an interesting thing. I discovered that I have patience. Who knew? What about you? How's life on your end? And I've just been attacked by a rogue teddy bear. What the hell? I was thinking... Give me a sec, Photoshop is lagging. I'm just gonna grab that color. And... Well, it's not less saturated, the hue is darker. So we're looking at that, we're going to move our opacity down, and just to 
give this color a little bit more of a natural tone. Um, yes, rogue teddy bears. Mine are especially vicious because they're perched above me, so whenever the house settles a bit, they fall off and hit me in the head. Um, a little slow, but things might pick up soon. Um, I hope they pick up. Wait, are you at work? <laughs> Oh wow. If you're at work, my condolences to you. I hope that you get something a lot more. Whoa. Sorry. Yeah. I hope you get something interesting to do. Unless this is your relaxation time, in which case I hope that you can relax. Oh, you're at home! But things might pick up soon. Are you expecting a party? I know I'm being extremely nosy right now. I'm just trying to figure out what's going on. Alright, so we did the Territory Bozu, um... Actually gonna go up in value for here. I want the water to be the lightest thing here, so... So for those of you who are just logging in, I am currently painting the second half of a triptych. The first half is this image that you're seeing right here in the bottom left hand corner. The one that you're seeing in the top right hand corner is the original reference by the artist Moon. And you can check the description for the link to his Instagram. Ah, all right, school. I want to say freedom, but <laughs> it's not really freedom. Um, okay, so let's go here to this right again. Take that down. I get the feeling I'm going to be doing a lot of patterns for this one. It feels like it should have patterns. Um. Organizing to try and get back into a trade school. What kind of trade are you thinking of going into? Not really sure how trade schools work, so I'd love to know. Give me a sec. I'm drawing ripples on this water. There we go. I'm all ears. So I think where there's nothing to show through, I'm going to darken the color and I might have to do some studies of transparent objects. I'm going to thicken the color where it overlaps each other or where it overlaps items. 
so places like here electrical and welding um yeah it's actually really good to get back into school um especially if you're thinking of going into a new place um give me a second i think this needs to be moved out of the way transition there we go it was blocking the piece There we go. Better. <laughs> you want to be... Um, if you decide to be a blacksmith, um... <laughs> I have a couple projects that I'm willing to pay you to do. <laughs> oh... Are. My only image of a blacksmith is like the big hammer from RPG games. And if that doesn't tell you I'm a nerd, then nothing else on this earth will. Okay, so since this is there, I'm gonna try for a glow. Let's see. Nope, this is not the color to use for glows. They're too close. There we go. Straight out of Ghostbusters. So, this is not the actual lighting. What I'm doing is I'm setting the base foundation for the glow. And by setting the base foundation, when I actually put the glow on the object, what's going to happen is it's going to pick up on these faint colors that I'm going to have in this underpainting. At least that's the plan. <laughs> Sometimes it doesn't work and it just ends up looking weird. But hey. Only the cool... <laughs> Are those projects of a geeky nature? Yes. Only the cool kids play RPGs. Yes. 100% <laughs> the cool kids. Um, I am thinking I'm also going to put some of this green in her skin. Because... I have a sneaking... Oh, that's not bad. Sneaking suspicion that... Yep. Okay, so these I am going to move upwards. There. There we go. So now her skin isn't see-through. Um, I'm liking the territory bozu so far. When I take the image off of it, I can still see the suggestion of the object. What I'm going to do is just steal a couple more colors and come down in here. And the only reason I can do this is because I know that's a, I know that's a ripple. So I'm just going to go in there. Steal that blue color again. And then finish it off with our Ghostbusters green. And that's what I'm calling this color. <laughs> Ghostbusters green. Um, so, full disclosure. I have never actually seen Ghostbusters. 
Okay, so I'm not saying I pulled a muscle while working out the other day, but what I'm saying is that I tried getting up after a while and it felt like I did. Um, the only thing I have to say to that one, honestly, Epsom salt. <laughs> I know that feeling. Epsom salt is your best friend right now. It's your best friend. Go soak in a bath full of water and Epsom salt. Um, so I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna come here. I'm going to take this way down and what I'm going to do is bring the color of the background into this. I'm going to take my references off so I can see what's going on here. For example, that needs to be added. If I can figure out what layer I'm on, which is the wrong layer. This is the layer I'm looking for. And I took my opacity so down that it, you can no longer actually see it. I'm not worried about these um, ragged edges right now. Because I'm going to blend them out. Bat salts cure everything, or at least they bring comfort. Yes, yes, they do. Um, the latest I'm probably going to go to is 10.30. Usually I end the stream at 10, but I'm on a roll right now, I'm having fun, and so that's why, whoops, I'm still here. We're gonna grab this purple color, bring it through just to create that, whoops, that see-through effect. And we're going to do the same thing with the background color. Um, I want to bring the opacity down more to like 13. That works much better. So it's looking more see-through. What's really happening is that I'm just adding more color on top and bringing out the black ground color. Um, in traditional art, you would usually get this effect by applying a wash of the color so that it just stains over it and you would just build up washes. Um, in Photoshop, since color works differently, the most I can recommend you do is build up, up um, layers of opacity. So build up your opacity slowly and try not to go too far too soon. That's my biggest recommendation. Don't go too far too soon. Let's get that. Yeah, just erase her whole head, you know. If I erase her whole head, then I won't have to render it. <laughs> um, probably add in some opacity here. As you know, I usually do the lightest color under it, so I'm going to bring up here. The base color of this one is extremely light. It's the color of the highlights that you're seeing in it. And I'm going to do a similar thing for this. Her hair is going to be a lot more purple, similar to the skin tone that you're looking at in the other one. However, Yeah, I don't think I'm dropping frames. However, yeah, I'm just going to build that one up now. So there's that. I'm going to run away with this darker purple color. 
and coming over here the light is coming from okay there's a green light here but the main light source is there so excuse me guys I'm just going to draw a big oh, just letting you know that's the piece Everything else is bonus, and uh, that actually presents a problem. I just realized that when I crop this out, you can't see the goldfish, and that's a problem because that's what's communicating festival right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna shift that up. So. And I think, yep, that's it. So let's hit shift and control shift. And I'm gonna grab that. Control T. Okay, let's click enter. And it's not working. So what I'm going to do is shift each of these layers individually. Okay, I just wanted to know because on my screen it's just having a loading bar, but as long as it's playing for you guys, it's good. Alright, so we did that, did that, got that down. And since I have the stream overlay, I can get rid of that. Let's put down some more flats, but before I do that, let's correct this. So I'm going to grab that, turn it off, And I'm going to turn on the crop overlay. So, turn off the crop overlay now, and I'm going to grab the water, the color that is. We're just going to move it up until it aligns with... Well, first let's move it down. Control T. And we will move the color up until it aligns with... There we go. Alright, so since I was not working with a prop overlay on, I made some um, bigger mistakes. 
not that big that it can't be fixed so I'm just gonna go in with the brush right now and fix them right up turn that off so I can get the actual color of the line and move that brush down and I'm gonna grab the color of this red move down here And my opacity is too low, so I'm going to move it back up to the 50s. There we are. And we're grabbing that color again. And what I want to do is get rid of this line, so I'm going to grab the color closest to the line. And there we go, much better. And I'm actually going to go in with the smudge tool right here. And the idea is to get rid of the line slowly but surely go to the brush down and switch right there good okay move my opacity all the way back up Just the roughest of rough drafts. There's probably lots of perspective problems in here. Um, can't bring myself to really worry about that because not a perspective issue. But I am going to leave the darker red here because it does reinforce the light source. But I will probably have the lighter red on top here. Okay, I think YouTube is freaking out. A few um, days ago, YouTube Analytics had a issue, meaning that all the data from the past two days before Saturday of last week, that is, was corrupted, and so it was inaccurate, so YouTube's having a lot of issues lately. Okay, so I'm doing the line here, and these are still flats. And so when I put the crop overlay on, Looking good. Looking good indeed. And I take the crop overlay off and all my mistakes come out to play. But that's what we're looking at right now. Um, yes. <laughs> Typical YouTube. But we're here. Um, 
Um, I actually don't have a name for the piece just yet. Uh, mostly because the reason I decided to make it a triptych was because I wanted to make a mock-up of the piece. Uh, for those that are watching who are not familiar with the term mock-up, a mock-up is when a digital artist creates a image to show what the work will look like in a certain form. So for example, if I wanted it to be a book, i create a Photoshop image of it being a book, even though the book is not real. But I wanted to create a mock-up of the original piece, the one that is over here, and I found a mock-up that had was a really beautiful mock-up, but it had three picture frames in it. And so I decided, okay, I can just put three pictures. It was originally going to be floating stones from the original piece. Um, unfortunately, this version doesn't have it. I think the version on your screen does, though. So, um... Right beside her ear, or beneath, beneath her mask, are some little floating stones. So, I was originally going to make bigger, more detailed versions of those, but I thought it would be more interesting to show other scenes from the festival. Because that one's very smoky, this one is very normal, I guess. What's wrong, Fawn? Where did I lose you? So, I decided to make this a triptych. Oh, YouTube stopped working on you for a second? I... Okay, so somebody was affected by it. So YouTube is currently not showing me accurate stream data and it's not showing me a live feed of my stream so I had to ask if the stream was working. Um, Isaiah said it was and so I thought it was working for everyone but if it's giving you issues, let me know. According to Streamlabs, I'm not dropping any frames, so I'm inclined to believe it's an issue with YouTube. And considering that YouTube did have an issue with the streaming data and the streams on Saturday, I am inclined to believe that it might be YouTube. Whoops. Okay, what I'm doing now is drawing patterns in the wood. It's kind of early for patterns, but um... Since the color is there, and I've got nothing doing, A lot of this detail that I drawn is going to be cropped out of the photo, but you guys in the Discord will get to see the full photo 100%. I'm glad that it's working for you now. I'm really, really glad. Um, not quite sure what's happening with YouTube. I'll check the creator news after this and see what's going on. In other news, Discord released a feature um, the other day that I'm actually quite excited to use once it updates on my once it updates on my uh, how do I put this on my Discord. Discord released Go Live on the 15th of this month, and so I should be able to do private streams for Discord or Discord people. So 
I'm looking forward to being able to try that out. Let's go here. Go here. And I'm just gonna move that down. Move my opacity down. So I'm not really working with a full color palette, so I'm and Photoshop is lagging on me, that's why I stopped. So I'm moving my opacity down. thinking similar to the other drawing maybe I need to structure the hair more yep streaming on discord it does sound very interesting I really really want to have the update soon however um as I can currently see it, give me a second, because I'm looking at it, the set, the server settings right now. And I don't yet have the go live function in my server settings. And so I'm a little bit sad. But once it gets out, I'm going to experiment with it and see if we can start setting up private streams for Discord people. Basically, um, what private streams is going to do is all the work that I do between the Saturday streams. It's a lot of work to set up Streamlabs and YouTube and everything. So I'm thinking for intermediate intermediary there we go without biting my tongue i'm so proud of myself um intermediary work that we do outside of the main streams on saturday will probably just be held on discord but this is where I think I'm going to leave you guys for tonight. It is currently 10.29. So I think I'm going to leave you guys here with this piece. And... I'll let you guys know where the updates are coming. Thank you for coming and viewing tonight. I am not sure what's up with YouTube, but I'll check it out. And I guess we'll figure out who this character is. Maybe I'll draw Nino in the last piece. Draw Nino's character. It's been a while since I've drawn, drawn her character. Bye bye. Bye guys. Thanks for stopping. Bye. And all my hearts and affection. Hold on. Let me find hearts. Here guys, have pudding. It's the first one. And since. I can't find hearts, but do you know what I can find? <laughs> Fun. One day Nino is going to hunt you down. I swear. <laughs> you can make the jokes, but can you make them when I fall in a hiding place? <laughs> All right, guys. Um, take care of yourselves. Fun. Go relax. <laughs> you think you've hurt yourself, and you're looking. <laughs> 
You're looking to have Nino hunt you down. She might make you into spring chicken. <laughs> she can hit low, Fawn. I'm done. She can hit low, don't worry. <laughs> she just needs to reach. Doesn't have to reach up. She can cut you off by the knees. And that's those are all the short jokes I'm making today. I've already signed my death sentence. <laughs> oh my god. Um Hold on. Let me see. Stream ending. Alright guys, that's us for today. Thank you for watching.